our expectations and our actual reality. Meeting a husband. We thought that when we got to no, you, you thought <laughs> <laughs> Some people need to learn when to not speak. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm here with my best friend, Christine. Hi guys. Introduce yourself. Um, so my name is Christine <laughs> and I'm also in my third year doing medicine at Cambridge yeah. University. But this year we're both doing psychology mm -hmm. and we met on the first day of lectures. Yeah. <laughs> I saw her and I was like, that girl. Black. <laughs> so today we're going to do a very interesting and honest mm. video our expectations and our actual reality mm. of studying in Cambridge <laughs> so let's go so number one um, meeting a husband we thought that when we got to no, uni, you th like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that yeah. when I got to uni like I didn't think I was just gonna I didn't think I was gonna meet him immediately yeah however I did think that at some point you know, at least there'd be some potential, mm -hmm. but there just isn't. There is not. No, and it's just quite sad. But you it's know, unfortunate. But there might be. There are lots of hidden people here, though. They're a bit too hidden for me because <laughs> I don't know where they are. <laughs> um, yeah. If you're watching this, can you just reveal yourself? Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so me and my husband. Do I think it was never like? It was a, like, I hope it happens. Mm -hmm. well, not even a husband, like, at least a potential. Like, I hope it happens, but I don't have high hopes. I just didn't have high hopes. Things I thought I had my expectations kind of low. <laughs> then I got here and I was like, oh <laughs> the my. bar is in hell. It actually is. <laughs> it genuinely is. But God's timing is always right, you know? God's timing is always right. <laughs> <laughs> Number two would be that I thought it would be like full of posh people. I guess it's like the Cambridge stereotype that it's like people that talk a certain way come from a certain area. But there are quite a few, quite, yeah. yeah there's still quite a lot of posh people. Because it really does depend where you come from. Like some people will come to Cambridge and be like, wow, this is so diverse. Yeah. Um, I, was like, I, was like, I was like, what? <laughs> but yeah, because I'm from London, this is not diverse to me at all. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but like there are loads of people from different backgrounds here mm -hmm. so yeah and just because they're posh doesn't mean they're bad people <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. like i'm pretty sure quite a few friends of, my, of mine are quite posh and they're mm. really nice people so yeah one thing i expected and i prayed and i hoped <laughs> would be that there would be less work than there actually is mm. but i think it was the initial shock that was like starting first year mm. And I had an essay before I even got here. And I was like, I don't even know how to write an essay. I haven't written anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then when you came oh. here, you had like two lectures on the first day. And then like it just starts. Like there's no, welcome, this is how you do. Mm. This is how we'll help you. It's like, you do it. <laughs> yeah, no, they really threw you into the deep end. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I was just very overwhelmed at the beginning. I was just like, what is going on? And everyone else seemed to be fine. Like, upon, like, after, you know, we got through first year, I talked to people and a lot of people were feeling the same way. But, like, no one was showing that. So it just appeared like everyone was just totally fine with, like, the ridiculous amount of work that we mm -hmm. had and that was just being, like, kind of thrown at us. But you do get used to it. Yeah. And so if you are like in your first year and you're finding it really hard, definitely talk to other people because you're definitely not alone in that. Yeah. But the work, thing with the work is like, I don't know if they expect you to do it all. Because like, how can you expect me to be doing all this reading and lectures and be writing stuff every week? Literally. Like, I don't think I really did extra reading. No. I was like, I can yeah. barely get through the stuff. That's <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even finish the lectures. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I definitely got to exams and I was like, some of this stuff, it's just not going to be learned. And that's okay. Mm. Because you can't learn yeah. everything. First year exam time, I was like, wow, this is actually interesting. <laughs> I was like, wow, this makes so much sense. I was like, once you understand how yeah. everything comes together, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like, oh my gosh, this like, is so yeah, cool. Knowledge. But during time, I was like, oh, I don't know what's going on. Mm. But you find, like, even though you have lots of work, you always find, like, ways to procrastinate. Mm. No matter how much work you have. No. 
like every stage of education that I've like progressed through, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be totally on top of it. I'm not gonna procrastinate. I'm gonna do everything early. No, yeah. no, in my third year, and I'm as in if my future employer is watching this, I am super organized and everything. Yeah, she's very diligent. Yes, but we are in a pandemic, <laughs> so you know sometimes doing work is harder, and mm -hmm. I think it's okay to acknowledge that. Yeah. Hi, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so number four. I thought that when we got here, there would just be, you know the stereotype of a Cambridge student or an, like an Oxbridge student, just that there'd be like geniuses and people who just like know it all and they'd be maybe kind of stuck up and kind of arrogant. Mm -hmm. But when I got here, I to be honest don't really know many people like that. Like if there are geniuses here, yeah, they're in their room studying. So <laughs> I haven't even had a chance to really interact yeah, with them. I even think like the genius geniuses aren't in their room too much. Like these really? are the ones that are always in Cindy's or where now Cindy's is died RIP. So sad. <laughs> so sad. No, yeah, but I think like those are the ones that were always in Cindy's because they could they had it easier. Mm. But then there were also people that were always in their rooms as well. Mm. So it's a real mix. There is. And I think like especially like the ones that are always studying, those they stand out. Yeah. So it's not like the whole of Cambridge is full of geniuses and then if you're not doing work mm -hmm. then you're the one that stands out. I feel <laughs> like a lot of the medics are like regular people mm -hmm. like they're smart and everything but they're not like a genius yeah at least i think <laughs> <laughs> sorry if we yeah sorry if insulted you, you. <laughs> <laughs> and that goes on to our other point of i thought and you probably thought that there would be no or like less social life but cambridge has a quite a large it has a big partying and drinking mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. <laughs> Like yeah, but people do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they um really try and encourage like a work life balance. Even mm. like our dosses, which are the director of studies. Like mine always tells me at the start of every year, like what extracurriculars are you doing this year? And then throughout the year, he actually makes sure I keep doing them. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's like, mine I don't want you. Care. I don't want you to get so bugged up in work. And <laughs> first year, I told him I signed up for athletics. It was the second term. I was like, I did. I didn't do it. He was like, Why? <laughs> I'm like, Sir, I have too much work. <laughs> and even this year, he was like, Yeah, I hope you keep on with it. I did not go to anything. <laughs> but we do cheerleading now. Yeah, exactly. We're cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not what it's like at all. I feel like if they're watching this, they're going to be like, this is not an accurate representation yeah. of what cheerleading We're is like. We're in pain most of the time. <laughs> yeah, it's actually like, it's really hard. It's really hard. <laughs> so you will have a social life if you get here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, so if you are new to this channel, both of us are Christians. Um, so when looking for a church, I thought that they were all going to be, you know, super traditional, very... Um, <laughs> I want to say like Caucasian, yeah. <laughs> but like I thought the churches were going to be basically just like not diverse at all, just like white people. Um, and obviously like traditional churches, that is a valid form of worship and everything, but it's just not my style. <laughs> so I thought that that was what all the churches were going to be like, but I was really just relieved to find <laughs> that there are churches similar to the ones that I go to in London and they're really diverse and, you know, very passionate about God, which I love. Yeah. I actually did go to, like, I visited, like, all the, not all of them, but most of the different churches. And then when we finally found Kingsgate, I was like, I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> I was so happy. I only visited one other church. I think I went to that church, Kingsgate, that church, Kingsgate, and I just stayed at Kingsgate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God definitely put us there, mm -hmm. which is good. Okay, the seventh um, expectation we had was that it would be very, in terms of politics, it would be very Tory centric mm. but from my understanding or maybe because it's it, it differs between colleges of course mm. so um i would say my college is i don't know most people's political views mm. but the ones that are mo more outspoken are labor so they're part of the labor suck and stuff but because it has a qu high private school like acceptance you don't know what these people are voting but yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At my college, I can't say it's the same, but again, <laughs> it differs depending on the college that you go to, mm. really. Um, so I wouldn't let that be something that holds you back from applying, because honestly there are people with all kinds of different opinions. Yeah. 
very far on both sides <laughs> or like right in the middle so yeah it really just depends mm -hmm. so the eighth thing is that i thought that terms are so busy there'd be no time to go home during term like i thought i'd just be so consumed in my work that i just wouldn't even like consider being able to go home but in my first year i went home quite a lot like there definitely is time to go home if you want to if you live close so because mm -hmm. i live in london it's only like an hour away but I guess if you live like in Scotland, then maybe not. <laughs> I think I went home once, and that was for my brother's birthday. Yeah, we're definitely making time for friends and family. Mm -hmm. Like I wish if it wasn't Corona, I would have been like going to visit oh friends in other colleges and the other universities and having fun. Yeah, no, I had <laughs> big plans for this year. Big, big plans. I was going to gallivant the UK. Yeah, I was going to go to like all the different unis, all the different events, all the ACSs would have seen me. <laughs> but now they can't. Yeah, there is time to do other things if you want to. Like whatever you're passionate about, you can still do it mm -hmm. here. Another thing I thought would, I expected was like some people would have been more emotionally intelligent mm. or more emotionally mature in terms of like things to do with race and class and just know when to speak and when to not because mm. <laughs> you think but here because everyone is so intellectual mm. you'd think that they would know about these things because i mean maybe it's just because like the people i surround myself it's kind of like an echo chamber in that most of the people who i'm close with are kind of clued up on a lot of things but uh, okay let me not speak generally from what i have seen obviously again experiences differ a lot of people just aren't they're just not mm. Mm -mm. Now, I think being here as well, because everyone is intelligent, they like to intellectualize everything. Mm. So, like things like race, it's always a discussion or a debate. Mm. Sometimes just don't talk. Exactly. Like, you don't need to make everything into a, a discussion. Like, sometimes our college group chat will be talking about something, and I'm like, <laughs> guys, this is just a bunch of white people debating. Like, <laughs> like, and it will be something like a really specific situation, but I feel like they just feel like they have to come to a solid conclusion <laughs> and it's like okay but this does nothing it, like, and, and it doesn't, doesn't affect cheat. them but yeah some people need to learn when to not speak <laughs> <laughs> and number 10 um we thought that there'd be more patient contact so we knew that the first three years are like pre-clinical we'd be doing mostly like just scientific theory and things like that and then the last three years are clinical and that's when you will actually be in the hospital like doing rounds and stuff but there really is not much patient contact at all no like at all i thought yeah maybe a couple times per term i mm. thought maybe like once a week <laughs> you once know a week? yeah because i realized that even though it's not part of the course we are still doing medicine so i mm -hmm. thought you know they'd want to expose us to what it's like being in a hospital mm. but no mm. no so do you don't care about those people in the hospital <laughs> they know all the researchers and that's know all the cell signaling pathways. <laughs> uh, yeah, like if someone collapsed on the street, I wouldn't know what to no. do. No, we haven't even learnt first aid. <laughs> oh, I learnt first aid, but our college like forced us to because our um, supervisor is like a paramedic. I remember in um, was it first year when one of our lecturers was having like angina? He was like, <laughs> I could collapse any minute. Oh, and, then, I yeah, that. and we were all looking at each other because we would have done like, nothing. <laughs> I'll call 999. That's it. No, like imagine being in a room of 200 medics and no one knows what to do. <laughs> it would literally, like, if someone was able to do something, it'd be because they had done first aid, but not because mm -hmm. it was compulsory. Yeah. It would just be probably out of their own initiative or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know next year we will actually have patient yeah. contact so and some people really enjoy the sciencey parts mm. i personally moving on <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think because a lot of people here maybe not i think there are quite a few people who want to go into research yeah. so these three years will actually be like super yeah, useful makes for sense. them um mm. i don't think that i'm one of those people so <laughs> It's been an experience, mm -hmm. but a lot of the topics are really interesting. Mm -hmm. It's just like a lot of it we will never use. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll still have patient contact later on. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just want to disclaim, right? This is my experience. If my yeah. college is watching this, <laughs> yeah, this is my experience. I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> I don't know why I said this to me. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you, Christine. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> 
Also, Christine has a YouTube channel. I do. That she hasn't posted on since <laughs> first year. <laughs> but she will post. I will post. Yes. I filmed a vlog at the beginning of this term. Go to her comments, her last video. I didn't even know what it was. What was it? <laughs> Go to her last video and yeah. make sure you like this video, make sure you comment yeah. and make sure you subscribe yeah. to her channel. Share with your friends, mm. your family members, your MCM that doesn't like you. Okay. Oh my Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>